Bank. Uh, I'm really glad and honored to have with me today in MetalRadio.gr, Class, the best player of Lord of the Lost. Welcome. Thank you for being with us. Hey, it's, you're welcome. It's a, he- it's a hectic season for Lord of the Lost because you intend to take over Eurovision with blood and glitter. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we hope so. We're doing our best. Oh, this is uh, the boy. Sorry. <laughs> He's beautiful too. <laughs> Thank you. You heard that? No, but okay. Yeah, let's. Um, sorry for distracting. Uh, yes, we d- hope uh, to to have a good place in Eurovision. Okay, you're uh, entering Eurovision this year yes. with your song yes. "Blood and Glitter." Did you yeah. have in mind to enter the Eurovision contest when you wrote the song? How did you decide to enter? Um, the song was written by Chris and our very good friend Rupert. And they had in mind, like, uh, because, you know, if you just meet and write a song, then sometimes like, hey, let's do a song that is a bit like this or like that. Or imagine we write a song that is good for this and that. And they kind of had the idea, hey, let's do something like that, like a song that could also fit to Eurovision, for example. And so they did. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's some kind of on purpose, but uh, we didn't know that we are going to be even in the pre-selection or whatsoever. So uh, it's just like a lucky event that they just met to write that kind of song and it worked out pretty fine. Even though Germany has a long metal history, after all, you have Wacken, the holy ground for metalheads. It's the first time they send a hard rock song. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel great about it. I mean, of course, uh, because uh, it's us. But um, I'm happy that uh, since Germany wasn't so successful the last years, Um, that they are actually trying to find something new, a new way to represent Germany. And this time is through uh, rock metal or something. So I'm really happy to be the first, one of the guys in the band to be the first to have a change in in the German approach. So let's hope that we do good as well. We all hope so too. (laughs) Were you a fan of the Eurovision contest? Did you follow it before entering? Uh, I was a fan as a kid. You know, we had like these uh, few TV shows that we could uh, stay up longer, you know, with a family. And there was Eurovision as well. But I kind of lost track when I got in puberty and I just found interest in like skateboarding girls and all the stuff. So... Um, I lost track. Uh, I got back a bit when Lordi uh, won that thing in 2006, but I was not really into it actually. So, and since uh, the motivation for Germany to to just celebrate this uh, uh, also got lost um, in the last years, um, I was not following it. But let's hope to to uh, to start a fire again that the Germans are really appreciating this event. Have you heard the songs from the other countries? Do you feel that you have an advantage as a band? Uh, I heard uh, some songs and I'm most likely interested in those crazy songs like Let Free, for example, uh, these mm-hmm. anti-war song with these crazy dudes with mustache and lingerie, uh, lingerie and uh, being crazy. I like them. Uh, I didn't have the time yet to listen to all the other stuff. But I think the advantage is that we are a rock band, like in case the world likes to have a rock song uh, nowadays. And I think we're, our advantage is that we're pretty much there for music and celebrate music with all together. Not like, hey, we're, we are going to win. I think we're just going to have a great time with everybody. And that's why eh, I think that's 
Well, we have a good chance. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> she wants to enter the conversation, I think. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that. She's uh, always like, when I'm busy and doing something, she uh, likes to have the attention. Sorry. Like every woman. Yeah. What feedback uh, have you gotten so far? Oh, uh, actually, a pretty good feedback. I mean, the Germans at some point are a bit like they believe in you when you win this thing. Before, uh, they are not the most supportive ones. But uh, the, the scene, the music scene, the rock scene, and a lot of people like from from uh, from the Eurovision itself, like the fan clubs and stuff, they love us and we're already having a great time and we're celebrating a lot. So even though uh, some people in Germany are a bit like, eh, we don't know if, if it's going to be a thing, we have a lot of support, but we still have to get a lot of people on our side. What are your expectations? Do you feel you can win over the con the contest? Have um, you thought about I it? We always say like um, we are at least as good as the others the last year, so the last place is safe. <laughs> but uh, some people saying that we could be like uh, in the middle uh, of the field. So, I mean, we try everything. Uh, if if we have a chance or even if we don't have a chance we do whatever we can and we mobilize all our fans all over the world uh, everywhere that's important that people from other countries like our song as well and it's hard to say we didn't think we win this uh, pre-selection so since we won that let's win the finale We're so happy we could die. Blood and glitter, sweet and bitter. We're so happy we could die. Blood and glitter, saint and sinner. We do fall before we rise. Now go, go, let your blood flow, flow. With broken wings, we learn to fly. We are blood and glitter. Well, it's a very huge exposure for the band do you feel that uh, you will be able to capitalize it in your career uh, as uh, as far as promotion is concerned because you are bound to make a tour around Europe to listeners who probably haven't heard of Lord of the Lost because not only metalheads will follow the contest so yeah do you feel Especially that you... not metalheads. <laughs> metalheads <laughs> are the minority, I think. And I think the outcome will be good because uh, we are not pretending to be something. We're just us. And it seems like the people like uh, what we are. So, uh, and I mean, we already have amazing opportunities uh, that we can be in television and meet some nice people. Tomorrow we are going to meet Prince Charles and Camilla, uh, because <laughs> they're visiting. Pretty royal. Uh, yeah, they're visiting Hamburg, and we're part of that show. And so, uh, yeah, we we'll shake hands with Prince Charles and more, and that's opportunities that usually nobody has. Uh, only if you're a royal or a superstar, like Elton John or whatsoever. But uh, yeah, I mean. We have nothing to lose. We don't need the Eurovision, but we're really happy that we can uh, be part of it to just, of course, spread our, um, not fame, uh, our visibility that people know us. We're pretty lucky. I am positive that all metalheads will be behind you guys because, you know, metalheads yeah. are like, uh, this is one of our guys. We will support them. <laughs> No, yeah, ma yeah. no matter and, and that, the country. That's important that we're, even though we're not uh, pure metal or death metal or we're not the defenders of the true uh, metal, but even though uh, the community that says, like, okay, it's not our thing, sorry. It's always when, when I'm busy, the guys are fighting. And I think in the end, 
uh, metal itself has to to get a lot, a big outcome uh, from this event as well. So I think it, ah, guys, stop. They were just shaking my. Uh, <laughs> I saw that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. So I think, but don't worry yeah, about it. it. No, it's good for metal because I mean, even though we're representing all metal or no metal at all, um, it's good that the scene uh, sees the potential that metal can grow again uh, in in the world. Since like genres like hip hop and stuff are growing so fast and metal is stagnating a bit, maybe there's a good chance that we open up a new future for that music scene. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to ask about Blood and Glitter as an album. Uh, it's yes. quite different. It's quite, I think it opens up your genre spectrum. How, yeah. the, how did your listeners uh, accept Blood and Glitter? Oh, they did pretty well. I mean, we have a good fan base anyway, and uh, we spontaneously put that record out like one week uh, before it came out. We just said like, hey, by the way, there's an album coming out. And the people were supporting us so much that we made it into the number one album charts in Germany. And I think actually the people pretty like that. Yeah, I mean... Even before the Eurovision, uh, the numbers were counting quite well um, on YouTube and everything were growing. And uh, also all the Iron Maiden fans seem to like it. So I think uh, we did great on that record to open up also to, uh, to more people. You're always a band that is quite visual. You always have... Uh great stage show and it's a big part of Eurovision having a, a great stage show. Can you tell us a few things about how you, I know that there is some sort of mystery around it, but if you can tell us any details about how are you going to present yourselves on stage? Uh, actually, it will be like uh, the pre-finals, the preliminary, pre the the, you know, the one that in Germany was in Germany. And it's going to be the same, but just like bigger and better. It's just like we just blow it up. So it's pretty similar, but pretty huge. Okay. What are, what is, um, do you feel that you have some sort of uh, debt behind you? Since you're representing your country, do you feel uh, a burden as to being, a, as to, we have to do it, we have to do good in the, in the contest because we're representing our country? Uh, at some point, yes. At some point, no, because, um, I mean, we're actually um, telling the people that we're doing it for the music, uh, for the music scene. Uh, it's a bit different in Germany to say like we're doing it for Germany. I mean, we're we're happy that we are born and raised in Germany. It's a bit tough to say we're proud since we didn't do anything for it. It's just fate that we got born here. Um, but um, we're also doing it for for the the, the people in Germany. You know, like uh, the music scene in Germany and everything. And I would love to see that the Eurovision comes to Germany next year because also a great chance for Germany again. Um, but I kind of do not feel pressure. I would feel more pressure if the whole country would cheer, like, yes, our heroes, like in other countries. But it's a bit like, oh, yeah, um, let's see what they will do this year. So it, it's actually easy, you know, because um, some people do not care so much. So it's like, oh, then it's easy, nothing to lose. But I think if the whole uh, country would say like, yes, 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 Lord of the Lord, Lord of the Lord, it would be such a pressure. But uh, we're just here to prove uh, the people, to prove them wrong that we can win this thing. And we're going to do, yeah. So okay. it's not that much pressure, much excitement. Great to hear that. Have any hardcore metal fans been uh, critical about you entering the contest? 
being sure, like sure there's all of yeah but but more like um oh yeah um please don't tell anybody that i support you but i will support you and i send uh, some text <laughs> messages to vote for you but please don't tell anybody you know it's like uh they love to support but some uh like there's some kind of a death metal police and something you know and they have to be like and it's, yeah. uh, for some, some it's a bit hard to open up to to something poppy as we are as well. But uh, they still support us. They just don't tell anybody. Have you checked out uh, the prognostics and the bets going around for your uh, uh, song? Have you checked out in which place you're on? Uh, actually, we were just uh, looking for those polls, you know, those those internet uh, votings and stuff. And uh, it seems like we're growing. We're just uh, start, yeah, being like number four or something. I mean, that would be pretty amazing already. But I don't know if it says anything or if it's just like random. But I'm always happy to, and it's motivating to see us a bit higher yeah i see are you planning on uh, using the fact that you're uh, visiting liverpool is liverpool a city that you were uh, that you've been visited before because the contest is going to be in a in a town that's pretty historical for music yeah and we've never been there but we're looking forward to it i mean since it's uh the hometown of the Beatles. And we're loving the fact that the Beatles came from Liverpool to Hamburg and started a career. And now we're going from Hamburg to Liverpool, the other way around, to 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 start that kind of new career, the new new uh, stage of a career. So it, there's a good uh, relation to it. It's pretty, pretty nice. I see. I'd like to thank you for this interview. Uh, it was a great having you. I know that you were here last summer with Iron Maiden. Yeah. I hope amazing. you're back here <laughs> soon enough. Yeah, in your own I show. love it. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. That would be great. Uh, would you like to send a message out to the Greek Eurovision voters? Yeah, uh, hey, you Greek voters, uh, I really appreciate, appreciated you when we've been uh, out with Iron Maiden. And I think you've been one of the craziest crowds I ever experienced. Also the day before play, uh, watching Judas Priest. And I hope that you are as crazy if it's about the Eurovision and if you like us the most to vote for us because, uh, yeah, we need all the help we can. And if all the Greek metalheads are in our favor, then uh, we're super happy. And we try to come back as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. And I have to tell you that I hope that it's with a full band so for you guys, because yeah. you need you need to be out at night, at least. <laughs> that's that's correct. Yeah, yeah that would be that would be great. But, but yeah, we come back because we really enjoyed it and it was super fun. And yeah, Greece is amazing. And I love the olive oil and the food and everything. Metal Radio. I don't dance. I headbang.